pastor will be speaking at Christian Faith Center, Bishop Ramirez, amen, in Monterey Park, amen, and we want um, you all to support for that um, service, and that will be uh, on the 24th, Sunday, the 24th at 11 a.m., 11.30, excuse me, and we'll keep you posted on this in Jesus' name. Okay, amen. So also, we have our Victory Takeover, amen, our uh, Victory Takeover Youth Revival on the 23rd of this month at 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, we have Pastor Hiram Shorter from Bethesda Temple in Los Angeles. He will be our speaker. We want you to invite your families, invite the young people. We want to have a marvelous time, a Holy Ghost time, because I know that God is going to do something at that service. So mark your calendars for May March 23rd at 1 o'clock p.m. here at 525 North Market Street. We're going to have our Victory Takeover Youth Revival. Amen. Also, we have our Greater Mountain States uh, Conference, April the 25th through the 27th in Phoenix, Arizona. They have changed the location. I'm going to give you some more information on that once we get it, uh, because they changed it last night. They have not updated the information to us, but I heard bits and pieces. So I will let you all know what the, the change is. Amen. So we have, you make sure that you register under the Greater Mountain States Council.com. Amen. The adults are $20, and those that are um, 5 to tw uh, 17, it's $10, and under 5 is $5 for the registration. Also, for the um, hotel information, it's going to be at the Residence Inn. And if you have any questions or any concerns, you can see us and we can get you to the right area. Also, right after the Great Mountain States Conference, which is Sunday, Pastor Fikes will be speaking at Free to Worship Ministries in Mesa, California, under the leadership of District Elder. Oh. Mesa, Arizona, uh, under the leadership of District Elder Andre O'Neill. Amen. And that's on the 28th of April, that Sunday. And they're located at 1818 East Southern Avenue in Mesa, Arizona. And we're asking that you, um, if you're able to go, to support in this area in Jesus' name. Um, also, those are your announcements. And we're going to take up an offering. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. We have our platform under Greater Works Apostolic New Life Center. We have Givelify. We have PayPal. And we have Cash App. Or if you want, if you have your debit or credit card, you can see Lady Melissa and she can swipe your card today. We want to thank and praise God for those who have supported this ministry. Amen. May the Lord continue to bless you and keep you. We want to thank and praise God. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed baked bread. That's why it's always, we talked about sowing seed uh, for the unharvest. That's what we have to do. We have to sow a seed so that way it can grow. Amen. So that way we can uh, keep the lights on, keep, the, keep everything open. So that way somebody that is in need, we can help them. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for your goodness and your tender mercy, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for these offerings that those that have given and those that, that did not have to give. We ask you, Lord, to stretch out this money right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you, Lord, for being debt free. Oh God, we thank you, Lord, for rebuking the devourer for your name's sake, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for the offerings, oh God. We're lifting it up to you, oh God, to further the gospel. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Meet every need, every desire. In the mighty, matchless name of Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to. Oh, we're going to give this uh, back to the hands of Lady Melissa in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah one more time. Have you ever been to someone's home and you felt welcome? 
you know, you we haven't felt well, you know, sometimes we've gone to uh, people's residence and you feel like I'm not moving from the couch. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to the bathroom. I'm not going to the living room. I'm staying right here. But then there's, you know, there's a saying, mi, mi casa su casa. And when you go into a home, you can, it's like a breath of fresh air. And it's, beca- it's not because the house is big. It's not because the furniture looks comfortable, but it's because of the spirit that's in the house. And so on today, we want you to know that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You should feel welcome in the house. Welcome to lift your hands. Welcome to worship. Welcome to cry. Welcome to praise him. Welcome to repent. Welcome to rejoice. But whatever you need, come with a expectation and we're just not here. God is not just saying welcome, but we need to say welcome into my heart, God. It's an exchange of a relationship. And so when we worship him, we need to know that we're worshiping him for a purpose, for a reason. I just don't want words to fall out of my mouth and my hands go up because people expect me to do it, but because it's in my heart to do. Amen. So we're going to sing a simple song. Welcome. In to this place, welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the presence of. Your people, so we lift our hands as we lift our voice as we offer up sweet praise unto your name. Come on, somebody say it. Say, welcome into this place. We just want to say, welcome, Lord. Yes, you are. Welcome into this world. So you desire to abide in the presence of your people. So we lift our hands as we lift our voice. As we offer up sweet praise unto your name. Say welcome into this place. Your heart is the place. We say welcome. Into this broken vessel, you desire to abide in the presence of your people. So we lift our hands as we lift. Our voice, and as we offer up sweet praise unto your name, so we lift our hands 
as we we lift our voice and as we offer up sweet praise unto your Lord hallelujah hallelujah come on somebody give them the highest praise hallelujah hallelujah heaven recognizes that word say hallelujah 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 from the bottom of my heart i say hallelujah hallelujah this time let us receive the word of god the time is far spent let us receive none other than our pastor pastor forrest a fikes the second somebody shout hallelujah come on somebody shout hallelujah hallelujah in jesus name amen praise the lord to everyone praise the lord to everyone let the church shout hallelujah because he's been good hallelujah because he woke you up this morning hallelujah hallelujah he's worthy to be praised amen we're giving honor to god who's the head of our lives. Amen. Thanking God for another opportunity to be in the land of the living. You may be seated and thanking God for his grace and mercies that endureth. Amen. On today. Amen. We're thanking God for being such a great and mighty God, an awesome and wonderful God. Amen. We're giving honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're giving honor to the spirit of holiness. Amen. We're thanking God for Lady um, uh, Melissa, Pastor Emeritus, Lady Emeritus, Minister Markeisha, all of the guests and friends. Amen. Thanking God for everyone who's here on today. We're going to get right into the word of God. We were in fellowship and ministry earlier today on the west side with a mountain of hope. Amen, apostolic, and we thank God for uh, that move of God over there. Amen. The um, a wonderful thing that um, Bishop Phillips, amen, Bishop and First Lady Benjamin Phillips, what they're doing on the west side, amen, winning souls for Christ. We had a wonderful fellowship over there, and we're back here in Inglewood, amen, the city of champions, and we're thanking God for what he's doing in the lives of his people. Let's go to the book of Matthew. We're starting at the 16th chapter in the book of Matthew. We had a mighty move of God. And that's where you want to be at, where God is. Amen. It, it doesn't matter the, the building size of the church. Amen. But if God is not within the four walls, of that building. Amen. You need to go somewhere else where the spirit of the Lord dwells in Jesus name. The book of Matthew chapter number 16. We're starting from verses um, 18 through 26. Amen. We're asking Lady Melissa to please read in the book of Matthew chapter number 16 verses 18 through 26 and it reads and i say unto you and i say unto thee that thou art peter and upon this rock will i build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and i will give unto you thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and of chief priests and scribes and be killed, and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him, and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, 
this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For, for whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is it a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the service. We thank you, Lord, for blessing, Lord, your servant on today. We thank you, Lord, for the energy, the strength, the knowledge, and the wisdom, Lord, to uh, speak your word, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. So we thank you, Lord, for decreasing your servant that your word may increase in the hearts, the minds, and the spirits of your people, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for salvation, deliverance, Lord, and edification through your word, healing power. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. You may be seated at this time. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the doing of his word. We just read the, out of the book of one of the four gospels, uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 18 through 26. And for a short span of time, we want to speak to your hearing on today. I was created to complete my assignment. I was created to complete my assignment. What are you saying, Pastor Fikes the second? Amen. We know that we all have all been um, given instruction to do a work for the Lord, a work for our job, a work for our families, whatever the case may be, many of us, all of us have been assigned a responsibility to fulfill. And part of the assignment, the reason why we were given those assignments in most cases was because we were given instruction, amen, to complete it for whatever the reason or reasons were, amen. If it was maybe a family issue, it was because we were best equipped in that family to handle whatever that circumstance was or is. If it was for a job, it was because it was to uh, help with the job uh, uh, to be completed, amen, the right way. And uh, we're given instructions based on qualifications and efforts. But when it comes to God, God gives us an assignment, not because he has nothing else better to do, but he gives us an assignment, amen, because the assignment is part of our ministry that goes out and it edifies his kingdom. What happens is, is that we're given instructions, and sometimes when we hear the instructions, one of the first things that we respond to those instructions sometimes is, I don't know if I can do it. Amen. I don't know if I'm qualified to do it. I don't have a whole lot of experience. Amen. I'm not one that is um, uh, astute in education. I don't know all of the various languages or uh, understandings of protocols and rules and regulations. But when God calls you, he also qualifies you. Now, we're talking about God. We're not talking about a, 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 a medical, the medical field, uh, the judicial system, amen, whatever uh, uh, type of uh, career field or path that you're in. Of course, when it comes to that, um, there are qualifications that need to be met for the mission to be 
completed effectively. Amen. If I don't know anything about uh, medical jargon or how to be a practicing physician, you might not want to hire me to do brain surgery. Amen. Why? Because I have good intentions, but I'm not educated and I'm not qualified in that field. Amen. Whatever the field that you are in, you want to be qualified so the result can be successful. But I am grateful to God that God thinks the same way, but in a different uh, uh, shape, form, and fashion. He doesn't always look for the highest qualified to start off with. Amen. He looks for the heart of man and woman that is pliable that he can get glory through. Amen. As you read this chapter, number 16, it talks about a whole lot of different things. Amen. And during this time, one of the challenges that Jesus was having was that you had a group of people from all walks of life. You had the Pharisees. Amen. What is a Pharisee? This is a, a, a group of people who are uh, educated in the laws of Moses and following, amen, the rules and regulations of the Torah, amen. And under the Torah, they were able to uh, give information, instructions, and also uh, uh, letting people know not uh, how not to get out of line with the law. Amen. These Pharisees were individuals that not only did they know the letter of the law, amen, but they tried to show the other people what they must do to keep the law. But the problem was with the Pharisees was that many of them, like people of today, amen, they were hypocritical in their ways, amen. They said one thing, but they did another, amen, and they tried to justify the law by hiding, amen, uh, uh, behind sin, but trying to tell people this is what the order of the law is saying. And then you have the Sadducees, amen, who were a part of, amen, the, the, um, uh, the Pharisees, but they were an elite group of men that were uh, very wealthy. And so they also had um, uh, the understanding of the Torah, and they will they will tell people uh, how not to get out of order, but it was for their own personal gain. They were self-righteous. And so when Jesus came on the scene, he was there, amen, not to do away with the law. The Bible says he was there to fulfill the righteousness of the law. And all of these highfalutin people that were uh, braggadocious about their education, none of them had an understanding of who Jesus really was and who sent him to come to the aid of God's people. Amen. They were under Jesus. They saw, they heard, they saw the miracles, they saw the signs and the wonders uh, to be performed, and they still didn't fully recognize who he was through action and deeds. Amen. There were disciples that followed Jesus, amen, and were there, amen, to commit their lives to the Lord through Jesus Christ. Peter was one of those people. And if you knew the background of Peter, he wasn't a Pharisee. He wasn't a Hebrew of Hebrews. He wasn't a Sadducee, amen. He wasn't part of the Levitical priesthood. He was none of the above, amen. Peter was a real dude, amen. He was an angular. He was about that life, amen. He was a hustler, he was a person that was about doing whatever he can do to survive. If he had to gamble a little bit, that's what he did to survive. If he had to lie to the Roman government and cheat on his taxes, that's what he did to survive. Amen. But it was something about Peter 
when he met Jesus, he wasn't articulate. Amen. He was a cusser. He was a rebel rouser. Amen. He was a hood type of guy. Amen. But when he met Jesus, something about the nature of Peter got the attention of Jesus. Amen. It doesn't matter how you start, amen, in life, but when you meet Jesus, amen, oh, a wonderful change has to come. Amen. He saw that Peter, after he cleaned himself up, and surrendered his life to Jesus, he saw that Peter has something in him that was foundationally sound. All he needed was access to knowledge and information. Amen. Sometimes you see people and you see that they're kind of rough around the edges, but if they yoke up with the right people, if they get the enlightenment of knowledge and information, in most cases, their lives can change for the better. Let the church shout hallelujah. I was created to complete my assignment. Amen. Peter was never looked upon at, by anybody to, to be a leader, amen, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nobody looked at Peter to be someone that was well taught or well endowed with the word of God. But when he met Jesus, he turned and changed his life around. Amen. And Jesus was up under all these great men of high authority. Amen. And they couldn't tell who he really was or his purpose. Amen. But it took a Peter to say when Jesus asked the question, whom do men say that I am? Amen. The Pharisees can answer. The Sadducees can answer. Some of the other disciples really couldn't answer. But Peter stepped up to the plate and he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. And Jesus said, wow, paraphrasing. He said, wow, a, a flesh did not reveal this to you. Amen. You got this revelation from the most high. See, we got to be careful in thinking that based on our past history, that we are not qualified or equipped, amen, to proceed and proclaim this bloody gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God is not asking for you to be the smartest in the group, amen. He's not asking for you to be the most popular, but what he's asking for is giving your bodies as a living sacrifice. Amen. He's asking for someone to have some type of a sense to know who he is. And once he recognizes that we know who he is, that's when he can start working on you. Amen. Peter said, I know that you are the son of the living God. I know I've seen, amen, the signs and the wonders. I've seen the miracles to perform. I've seen, amen, the deaf hear and the blind to see, amen, the crippled to walk, amen, the dead to rise up. I know who you are, amen. And because Jesus recognized, amen, the innocence, amen, the determination in Peter. He said, upon this rock, amen, will I build my church, amen. See, God wants to see if you have some foundation in your spirit to want him to enter into build, amen, upon your life, amen, but if you're wishy-washy, if you're all over the place, he can't work on you, amen, it took not a person of great education, amen, and prowess, amen, to build the, the kingdom of heaven on, it took a Peter, I was created to complete my assignment, Amen. Peter's assignment did not just uh, uh, stop on being a fisherman. 
Amen. He was a very, very great fisherman, but that was not his assignment to just fish all day. Peter was created, amen, by God to be fishers of men. Amen. Fishers of women and boys and girls. Amen. One that will teach the unadulterated word of God that did not hesitate uh, uh, how he looked or how he sounded. But the word of God that was impressed on his heart, Peter was the one that Jesus gave the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. We got to understand that we were created, amen, to complete our assignment. Many of us don't really know what our assignment is because we haven't sought God for the answers. Amen. Peter didn't think that he was going to be that guy. But see, God will use anyone with a made up mind. What he's calling for in 2024 is a tribe spirit amen he's calling for someone that's saying that i won't be ashamed amen to to spread the gospel of my lord and savior jesus christ see the pharisees and the sadducees they were full of pride amen and they 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 they, they weren't fully aware of even who jesus was or his purpose amen but it took a peter Amen. It took a Peter to say, look, I see him, I'm around him, and I know this is uh, the perfect will of God. The Bible talks about in chapter 17, it says that when Peter was uh, letting Jesus know that, hey, I'm with you, I'm going to be uh, behind you, I'm going to support you, and you know what? Um, you're going to be here forever. Amen. And Jesus had to rebuke him openly and say, look, the purpose of me being here was to die for the sins of the world, not just to die, but to die and to rise up again. Amen. For the sins of the world. Peter didn't want to accept that uh, challenge. Amen. So what he did was he says, no, that's not going to happen to you, Jesus. And Jesus had to openly rebuke him. Amen. And say, Satan, get thee behind me. But once Jesus realized that Peter was coming from a place of innocence, he didn't know. He was not uh, 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 understanding that Jesus was not going to be here on the earth always. Amen. He told Peter and everyone else, he said that you got to take up your cross. Amen. You got to follow him. See, many of us don't think that we were created to complete the assignment that God has in, uh, 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 given us. Amen. Well, we feel that we're not good enough. We're not smart enough. We're not savvy and educated in the word of God. But I'm here to encourage someone's heart. Amen. The mission that God has given you, you must complete it. Why? Because it was tailor-made for you. Amen. There's people right now that are waiting for you to get right with the Lord. Amen. To get converted, to get strengthened, to get saved, so they can follow you as you follow Christ. And let the church shout hallelujah. Amen. We are often uh, in a state of confusion when it comes to completing the assignment. See, in, in, in our educational system, if a test is given and or an assignment, let's say, is given and you don't complete it, amen, you might get partial to no credit. Amen. And then what will end up happening is you will fail. Amen. So what will uh, uh, God is trying to say on today, I'm giving you an assignment that is doable. See, my assignment is not Sister Charlie's assignment. Amen. My assignment is not uh, Sister Brown's assignment. The, assi the assignment that God has given us is custom made. And he wants us to complete it for his glory. Amen. Peter was a representation of the church. 
amen, from all kind of backgrounds, amen, from all kind of walks of life, amen, really didn't know all that was in store for him. But what he did know, what he was confident about was that Jesus, amen, came here for uh, uh, the, the remission of sins of the world. What he did know was that Jesus came, amen, to give us a right to the tree of life. What we have to do is that we can't put anything in front of our assignment. The Bible says, what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Many of us are in a, a, a default of possibly losing our souls because we're putting other things in front of God. Peter could have said, look, I don't want your keys. Amen. I just want to be an ordinary person. And he could have walked away from his assignment. But by doing so, you are forfeiting your blessing. Amen. Keys represent authority. Amen. When Jesus gave him the keys, amen, he gave him not only access. See, he's given the world access to eternal life. But when Jesus gives you a set of keys, it's personal. Amen. The keys mean that you have full autonomy, amen, to the tree of life. You have full autonomy to unlock doors that are closed, amen, and unlocking them to your favor. Amen. Unlocking avenues where the devil says, look, you can't come down the street, but because my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ gave me the keys, amen, I have power over the enemy, amen, we have to understand that he created us, amen, so we could complete our assignment, huh? what is your assignment, huh? you have to ask yourself huh, that question, huh? many of us already know the answer to the question, huh? but what we have to do is that we have to make sure and very sure huh, that we do the task that's given. Huh? Why? Because souls are depending on us. Huh? Your family huh, is depending on you, Deacon Carol, huh, to finish huh, and complete your assignment. Huh? Amen. My family huh, is 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 waiting for me huh, to complete my assignment, depending on me, huh? amen, so they can be set free and delivered. Huh? See, we don't know who we're connected to. That's why God has given us, amen, uh, a way for our escape. Huh? Amen. It's called the Holy Ghost power. Huh? And when you receive the power huh, of the Holy Ghost, huh, it allows you to have a way huh, to escape huh, from sin huh, and shame. Huh? Let the church shout hallelujah. We got to know huh, that we're not here just to be here, huh? not haphazardly, huh? but we're on assignment. Huh? And it's funny that uh, all these people uh, that were uh, uh, highly educated uh, in the Torah, uh, Jesus couldn't do nothing with them. Huh? Not because uh, he was unable. Uh, it was because those people uh, didn't want to be bothered. Uh, but it took a Peter uh, to say, look, Lord, uh, here am I. Uh, I want to serve you. Uh, I want to adore you. Uh, I want to do a work for you, Lord. Uh, I don't know how to do it, uh, but Lord, uh, amen, it's me. Uh, send me. Uh, I'll go. Uh, whatever you have uh, for me. Uh, I don't understand it, but Lord, I believe who you are. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lord. You are, amen, the manifestation of God. Amen. In flesh, you are Jesus, the Son of the living God. You are the great Am. Lord, whatever you do, Lord, use me so I can give 
glory back to you. I am here on assignment, an assignment only. I'm not here to tickle your fancy. I'm not here to impress you, but I'm here to do a work for the Lord. I'm here from the kingdom of heaven. I'm here to give glory to God, that he is a savior, that he is a deliverer, that he is 911. He is a rescuer. He is all that I need. Let the church show hallelujah. I was created uh, to complete my assignment. Uh, in other words, uh, if I was created to do uh, the assignment of God given to me, uh, that means uh, it is uh, going to be done. Uh, I don't know how. Uh, I don't even know when. Uh, but God is going to give me the strength uh, that I need, uh, amen, to accomplish, uh, amen, his word uh, through me, uh, Peter was the one, huh? the cusser, huh? amen, the gambler, huh? the one that was a uh, uh, thuggish. Huh? He was the one huh, that God saw that if I can just get in his mind huh, and change him, huh? Turn him from uh, his wicked ways. Uh, if I can just get a hold uh, of this man named Simon Peter uh, and change his name uh, from Simon Peter uh, to Peter uh, the Rock. Uh, that I can build my church on. Uh, I think uh, no, uh, that things are going to work out. Uh, you need a Peter uh, sometimes in today's time uh, to help folks know uh, that they don't have to feel like uh, they're a hostage to their past. Uh, you need a Peter uh, person uh, that's not all puffed up, uh, that will be transparent uh, and tell you the truth. Uh, you need a Peter that says, uh, God can save you uh, from the gutmost uh, to the utmost. Uh, God can clean you. Uh, he can smack the blunt uh, out of your mouth. Uh, he can take the taste uh, of cigarette smoke uh, out of your mouth. Uh, drugs, alcohol, uh, fornication, uh, lying, cheating, uh, out of your spirit uh, and give you a heart uh, of gold, uh, give you a heart uh, of flesh, uh, give you a rocky foundation uh, to build his church. Uh, what does rock mean? Uh, it means solid. Uh, on this rock, uh, on this solid rock, uh, I stand. Uh, see, when you're on a solid rock, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, a foundational shift uh, because the rock is solid. Uh, it ain't going Nowhere. Uh, the enemy might try uh, to tear you down, uh, but when you're built on the rock uh, of Jesus, uh, when you are built, uh, amen, on this rock, uh, God will bless you. Uh, God will keep you. Uh, you will prosper. Uh, you will do the assignment given to you. Let the church, uh, hallelujah. It's time to be built like a rock. Uh, Hey man, I wish I had someone here uh, on today that says, you know what? Uh, I got to allow God to place that rocks in me, uh, that foundation in me, uh, where once he puts, uh, amen, his covenant on me, uh, I'm not going nowhere. Hey amen. One thing about a rock uh, foundation, uh, it don't matter how old it is. Uh, it don't matter how dilapidated, hey amen, it might be. Uh, if it has good bones, uh, hey amen, it will stand the test uh, of time. Uh, we got to stand uh, the test of time uh, in 2024. Uh, the great falling away uh, is happening in the church. Uh, first. Huh? That's scripture. Huh? Why did it say the church? Huh? First, because huh? that's the first huh? place that the enemy huh? is trying to attack. Huh? The church. Huh? Hey, Amen. Then he goes from the church. Huh? Then he goes to your family. Huh? Then he goes to the head of the house. Huh? Then he tries to eviscerate huh? everybody. Huh? Destroy, kill, and steal huh? everybody. Huh? But once you got the rock, huh? that solid rock huh? for Jesus huh? in your life, huh? no matter what he tries to do huh, to you. Huh? He can't break you because huh? you're built for this thing. Huh? You are built on a solid rock. Huh? You need to be huh, 
on a solid rock uh, that is called Jesus. Uh, and when God builds me up uh, on that solid foundation, uh, I can complete uh, the assignment. Uh, I won't worry. I won't fear because I know God is with me. He built me for this. He built me for the persecution. He built me for the attack. He built me for the defamation of character. He built me for this. I was created to complete my assignment. Don't matter how bad, bad is, I'm going to get through it with the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. What profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? It's a waste of time. He built me to get my cross, to bear my cross and follow him. Amen. He says if you save yourself, you're going to lose your life. But if you lose your life for him, he's going to save you. He's going to, he, he, if you do it for his name's sake, when was the last time you did something for the name's sake of Jesus? How can you be destroyed? How can you be messed up? How can you be taken out of here if you're doing it in the name of Jesus? Why is it that doing it in the name of Jesus makes you messed up? It don't make you messed up. It makes you covered with his blood, covered with his power. Amen. I'm doing it in the name of Jesus. Amen. No weapon has formed against me. It didn't say that they weren't going to try. It, wasn't, that is, it didn't say that they weren't going to point the gun at you, the weapon of choice. But if they try to harm you, it won't prosper. <clears throat> I can't finish what I'm doing because they mess with me. But if you go in your assignment, with the coverage of God on your life. It doesn't matter if they mess with you. The power of the Holy Ghost is that, that, that hedge of protection. And when you try to go over, amen, the hedge of protection, something bad is going to happen. Amen. Because God says, no, you're not going to touch my anointing. Amen. You're not going to touch, amen, the anointing of me, and you're not going to do my prophets no harm. Amen. I know that you are talking real tough, but are you talking to the king of kings? Amen. You're talking to the alpha and the omega. Hallelujah. How dare you? Amen. And I'm going to make sure and very sure, amen, that my servants are going to keep my commandments and they're going to fulfill their purposes. It's time to know in this victory takeover year, amen, your purpose is going to be fulfilled. If you keep walking upright, uh, amen, by God, uh, he's going to bless you. Uh, he's going to keep you. Uh, amen. People are going to run to God because they see what you're doing for God. Amen. It's time to complete that assignment. That's why you were created. You were created for a time like this. Amen. You were created to go into your community. Amen. Into your family and tell them that God is a deliverer. Let the church shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is trying to get our attention. Amen. Some of us has uh, uh, been taking our assignments and we've been putting the assignments on the shelf. On the back burner. Amen. We put it in the storage cabinet. Amen. And God is saying that assignment is not going to go away until you complete the course. And that's why Jesus in my closing had to rebuke Peter because he said, look, you try to pump me up and make me feel all good and special and fuzzy on the inside. Man, look. I got a lot of work to do. And part of my assignment is to not only give life, but I have to die for this cause. This is the cause that I came into the world. Amen. What would happen if Jesus would have said, look, uh, I'm not going to sit up here and fast for 40 days uh, and 40 nights. Uh, like biscuits, uh, like gravy, uh, 
I like oatmeal. I like grits. But look, I got to starve myself. I got to push away the plate. Because there's a greater anointing coming my way. And I got to be prepared, amen, to deal with the sins of the whole universe. Amen. Past, present, and future. So I got to have my mind and my heart ready for the assignment. That's why I was created. And I was created to complete the assignment, not to tap out and say no mas. No, but I was here to finish my course. Paul said that I fought the good fight of faith. He didn't just say he was just fighting a good fight, but he said I fought a good fight of faith. Amen. I did what I was asked to do, and I went above and beyond to the glory of God. I did what I needed to do so God's glory can prevail in this time as this. So when you do what God says, do blessings to come your way. Amen. The blessings is not just monetary. Amen. The blessings is one of the blessings. Amen. It's the fact that souls are being delivered through your ministry. Amen. Through your sacrifice, through your hallelujah, through your prayers, through your fasting. Amen. Through your laying on the hands. Amen. You got to complete the assignment. Huh? Amen. We're asking people huh, to get on all these medicines and drugs. Amen. And they still not healed. Huh? Amen. They're not healed. Huh? They're worse off than they when they started. Huh? And then they're broke. Huh? But God is saying whatever the ministry huh, or whatever assignment I gave you, I created you so that assignment could be fulfilled for my glory. Amen. And Peter, amen, he was ready, amen, to fulfill his assignment. And God used him. And he was the first one, amen, to speak the message of repentance. Amen. The person that used to be all those ugly things. Amen. The one that was quick to draw a weapon. Amen. And to try to cut you. He wasn't just one to want to cut. Amen. He was, I might kill you, but God changed his life around. God made him a vessel to be used. Amen. He made him an example that it don't take all of this other stuff trying to make yourself bigger than God. All I need is a vessel that's willing to be taught that's willing to adhere to instructions, that's willing to be obedient, to follow my commandment. Let's give God a hand praise. I was created to complete my assignment. Whatever assignment that God has given you, we have to do it unto him. We're not talking about just education. We're not talking about just status. Nothing is wrong with that. But there's an assignment spiritually that God wants us, amen, those who are under the sound of my voice, to complete. Because people are not going to be drawn by God if they don't see the God working through you. So we're here as we stand. We're here to admonish you that when you give and surrender you're all to God. God is going to prepare you for ministry. He's going to bless you and give you what you need, amen, to be able to help someone that does not have the power, as someone that does not have the understanding. And that's why we got to surrender our will to God. I'm so glad that Peter had enough keen sense to know what his purpose was. And the first thing he did was he was able to say that, look, I know why you are here. And we got to know why we are here. To just come to church in the four walls and go out and no souls come back within the four walls. Amen. 
The church is supposed to be in us. The word of God is supposed to be in us, amen, to edify God with. Don't let nobody on social media tell you, amen, that the structure of the church is whack. We got to be careful what we say and how we say it. There's nothing whack about God. Amen. What we got to do is that we got to change our wicked ways. We got to stop tripping and we got to make sure that we're doing our service unto God. If there's someone on today that's saying to themselves, I agree that I was created to complete my assignment. <laughs> and my assignment was to draw men, women, boys, and girls to Christ. And then whatever other gifts, extracurricular that I have in me, God can use those gifts, amen, to uh, 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 my ability. But it's for God's glory. And somebody is saying on today, look, I've been to a lot of churches. Amen. You all are not the first church that I've been to. Amen. But I see that there is something different in this ministry that I'm getting. And I want to surrender Amen. My will to God. I don't want to be like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Amen. That are just basically all talk, but no action. Amen. And they're not doing it unto the Lord. Lord, I want you to change me. I want you to see that I got rock in me too, that you can build on. I, I got something stable that I can give you that you can trust me, amen, with your word. You can trust me to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You can trust me to rebuke, amen, and remove all these spirits, amen, in your name that's on folks, that, that, that's, that's paralyzing people's praise and worship unto you. You can trust me to have that rock that you can build upon for your glory. If you're tired of struggling for no reason, you know what God has been calling you to do for years, and you put him on hold, the mute button, the back burner, amen, put him somewhere, and you just forget about what he's asked you to do. This is your opportunity to repent. This is called, for those who have not been here before, the altar is called the judgment-free zone. We don't care what you've done or what you've been through. Amen. We're, we can't put a heaven or hell, uh, put you in a heaven or a hell. Amen. Only God can judge you, but let him judge you, amen, faithfully. Let him judge you with the right judgment that you've made the right decision. This is your time to say, Lord, I need to be saved. I need to be baptized in Jesus' name. I need your power of the Holy Ghost. Is there someone on today that wants that changed life, that wants your assignment to start and then be completed and validated by God? The Bible says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. If there's anyone on today that says, Lord, I need you, I can't go another day without you. Amen. I can't wait till tomorrow because it's not promised. Amen. Tomorrow is really today because tomorrow does not exist unless God says it does. So if there's someone that says, look, I need to be saved. We can pray for you. We can take you down in the name of Jesus. We can take you in a place where we can uh, I pray for you to receive the Holy Ghost. Is there one on today? Is there someone that says, I need deliverance? I need forgiveness. I had a rough week. Amen. Now I'm at the first day of the new week and it's getting rougher and rougher. Is there someone that's saying on today, I want to complete my assignment, but I got to get rid of some things, some junk in my closet. Spring cleaning. But when it comes to Jesus, it's year round. Don't wait till the spring to start throwing away stuff and getting rid of your clutter and, 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 and sweeping the floor. Amen. You're sweeping the floor. Amen. That has not been swept for almost a year. 
Spring is not the only time that God wants to work in your life. He wants you, he wants to work on you in the summer, the fall and the winter. Amen. This is your time. Amen. Let the church shout hallelujah. Let's give God a hand praise. We thank God for the word that went forth on today. Amen. We want you to know that we love you. Amen. We're praying grace and mercy on your lives. <laughs> and we want you to know anytime you're ready to complete your assignment, you got to give it first to the Lord so he can answer your prayers. Amen. May God bless you. Richly is our prayers and be blessed in Jesus name. And remember these words, whatever you do and wherever you go, please take Jesus with you. Have a blessed day. And thank you for all of your birthday uh, uh, acknowledgements. Today is my birthday. Thanking God for seeing 46 years. Amen. God is a good God. He's a great God. So we love you. Amen. In Jesus name. Hug someone. Hug someone and tell them that you love them. In Jesus' name, be blessed. I was created to complete my assignment.